President Kamala Harris. I do want to say, because I know she's listening backstage, American jobs, uh, powers American industry, and again, powers President Kamala Harris. I do want to say, because I know she's listening backstage, thank you, Madam Vice President, for your leadership, both domestic and abroad, and for your persistent and enduring advocacy for underserved communities all across the country. Congressman DeLuzio and Congresswoman Lee, thank you all for joining us. Uh, I am so grateful for your partnership, uh, your commitment uh, to ensuring the health and safety of every Pennsylvanian. Lieutenant Governor Davis, thank you for welcoming us to this great state of Pennsylvania. We greatly appreciate your leadership. And Mayor Ganey, it is so good to see you again, and thank you for having us with you. And thank you for all that you do for the people of Pittsburgh. Folks, over the past three years, I've had the privilege of traveling all across this great nation, from the biggest of cities to the smallest of rural communities. I've met with people from all walks of life and all backgrounds. And there's one thing that we all agree upon, that clean water is essential. Clean water is essential for our health. Clean water is essential for our well-being. Clean water is essential for our economy. And clean water powers American jobs, powers American industry, and again, powers our entire economy. It sustains life, it sustains our environment, and it preserves vital and diverse ecosystems all across this great nation. But even today, as many of you know, too many parents know the pain of having a child sickened by contaminated water. Too many communities have been left behind and are suffering from decentralized and inadequate wastewater systems. And that's why President Biden and Vice President Harris have made investing in our nation's water infrastructure a cornerstone of this administration's agenda. Investing in our water is investing in America. Thanks to the bold, visionary leadership of President Biden and Vice President Harris and our colleagues in Congress who are doing a great job for you, by the way. The bipartisan infrastructure law delivered the single largest investment in water infrastructure in United States history. More than $50 billion, and that's billion would it be, to replace lead pipes, protect treasured waters, and build drinking water and wastewater systems that are resilient in the face of climate change. These investments present a historic opportunity to change the game for so many communities struggling to access clean water across the country. And I'm proud to say that EPA is central to and leading these efforts. And we're moving quickly to get this transformational funding out of the door. And today, EPA is investing $5.8 billion in drinking water and clean water infrastructure upgrades all across the country, thanks to the Biden-Harris administration, uh, administration's investment in America. Yes. Now, almost a year ago, Pittsburgh celebrated the removal of the 10,000th 10, lead service line. And with a recent award of over $32 million in state revolving funds, the city is set to remove more than 2,600 lead service lines in and around Pittsburgh communities this year. Today's funding announcement is only going to help accelerate this great progress and ensure that even more communities across Pennsylvania have access to clean, safe, and affordable water. We know that investing in our water infrastructure is one of the best decisions we can make for our country, for public health, and for environmental protection, for job creation, and for the strength and vitality of our economy. So folks, together, we will propel great cities like Pittsburgh into the future with safer, healthier, and more resilient water infrastructure. And President Biden and Vice President Harris are investing in America and making this reality, this vision a reality. So thank you all for being here today. Please welcome City Clerk for the City Council of Pittsburgh, Kimberly Clark Baskin.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kimberly Clark Baskin, and I am the city clerk for the city council of the city of Pittsburgh, and I am also a proud resident of the Homewood community. As you all know, Vice President Kamala Harris has been a huge advocate for the communities across the country to have clean and lead-free drinking water, getting lead pipes removed and replaced, and the remediation of lead paint that still exists in so many homes nationwide. My family was personally affected by lead in a home, so I know what damage lead in paint and in water can cause. Many years ago, my father had started having breathing problems with no concrete answer as to why. My son and I were having frequent and unexplained headaches, and my daughter had very high lead levels in her blood work. Everyone's health issues were concerning, so my father took the next step to contact a program through Allegheny County to, leak, to get a lead remediation done in our home. The results were astounding, and we began to get answers to some unanswered health issues. Allegheny County began to work on our home and worked quickly to get all of the lead removed. Months after the work was done, my daughter's blood work improved, the frequency of our headaches began to decrease, and my dad's breathing had improved. Never did I think that lead could cause so many health issues for my family. I shared this with our vice president during her 2022 visit, and it was so great hearing the passion and concern in her voice, speaking on how diligently she and the administration is working to make sure that all households achieve the goal of having access to clean drinking water and lead-free paint. When I learned of the vice president's return to Pittsburgh as a follow-up to her first visit, it made me feel good to know that she genuinely cares and came back to hear the progress that has been made and to check on our communities in the city of Pittsburgh. I admire our esteemed vice president she is me and I am her. She is a woman of color. She silently inspires so many black and brown children, young adults and adults to keep pushing and pursuing their goals by showing her strength and consistency to break all glass ceilings placed above her. She validates the saying, anything is possible if you put your mind to it, you work hard and you never give up. She stands tall in the eye of adversity and she is the voice for so many. She genuinely cares about the people of the United States and continually fights for equality across the board. It is my humble pleasure to introduce our amazing Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. Pittsburgh, it's so good to be back with you. Please have a seat. Thank you. It is so good to be back in the city of Bridges. I appreciate all of you and all the leaders who are here. Again, I want to thank Madam City Clerk Kimberly um, for that introduction and for the ongoing conversation that we've been having. And her story is sadly the story of so many people. And it is the story that the President and I have been hearing in many places around our country. And I know it is long overdue and it is time that we actually implement solutions. And I'm here to say we are. And I thank all of the leaders here for being a part of that. Um, and I wanna thank all of the leaders who are here, including Administrator Michael Regan. He's doing an extraordinary job on behalf of our administration. He's a bold leader of the EPA. Representative Summer Lee, Representative Chris Deluzio, I want to thank you. And then, of course, your two senators wanted to be here today. And in their absence, I will say that Senator John Fetterman, I was just speaking with his wife who is here, is a leader of profound strength and courage. And we are so grateful for his service. And in the United States Senate, many of you know, when I was a senator, for the time I was there, I had the great joy and pleasure of working with Senator Bob Casey. And I'll tell you what you know. I mean, I've seen him when the cameras are on and when they're off. And he is always a fighter, fighting for the people of Pennsylvania and for the children of this state. In fact, he played a critical role in securing the funds to remove 
every lead pipe in Pennsylvania. So if we can applaud their leadership, please. Yes. So to all the other leaders who are also here, the parents, the grandparents, the advocates, the teachers, the community leaders, I thank you for the work you have done over so many years to make sure that this community, and by extension as a role model, many communities around our country, um, that they have access to, as Michael Regan said, one of the most basic and essential resources, which is clean water. Clean water. Can you believe that in the United States of America, that is still not necessarily guaranteed to all people to access clean water? And so I'm here today to announce some of the work that we have all been doing together over many years that is righting this wrong. Because I think we all believe that every person in America has a right to clean water. And yet today, across our nation, for far too many Americans, that right is under threat for a variety of reasons. Um, one being, of course, when we think about the climate crisis and how that has impacted people across the West, millions of people who have endured historic droughts. In fact, when I visited Lake Mead two years ago, the water level was at the lowest it had ever been. Um, and Lake Mead supplies clean water to 25 million people in California and Arizona and Nevada. Um, let's think about what has been happening in the South um, where even moderate flooding can overwhelm sewage systems and contaminate drinking water. In fact, one woman I visited with told me that when her backyard floods, she can hear sewage flowing underneath her floorboards. And as a result, too many communities across the South, we have seen a rise in infections like hookworm, which are basically, I see people nodding, tiny, parasites that burrow into the skin and cause fever and nausea and abdominal pain. So this is a serious issue. It is a serious issue with serious health implications, not to mention just basic points about what we need to do to, to address inequities. So when the president and I took office across our nation, we decided to deal with this. We decided to deal with the fact that Americans in up to 10 million homes and children in thousands of schools and childcare facilities had to drink water coming out of lead pipes. Think about that and understand what it means. At school, our children were drinking water from fountains contaminated with lead. At home, if they poured a glass of water from the kitchen sink or sat down for a home-cooked dinner prepared by loving hands, but sadly, using tap water from lead pipes, they were consuming then toxic water. Lead is a poison. It stunts growth. It causes damage to the brain. It affects a child's ability to learn. In fact, last year I met a nine-year-old boy. His name is Aiden, a young leader. Aiden is healthy. He is full of energy. But that was not always the case. Because when Aiden was two years old, he was hospitalized for lead poisoning. His mother, Deanna, described to me how the lead poisoning caused Aiden to experience severe mood swings. One minute he'd be happy, the next minute he was sobbing. His mother told me, as you can imagine, it was terrifying for her as a parent. And of course, no child should have to endure that. No parent should have to endure that. And I'll tell the leaders here, which you already know, for years, Parents, grandparents, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunties and uncles, people in the community have been talking about this issue and have been demanding to be seen and be heard. Demanding and saying, look, it does not require a scientist or a doctor to understand the impacts of lead pipes on the health of our children. And the voices of the community must be heard. And let us also acknowledge that while lead pipes were once standard in all communities, today not all communities are impacted in the same way. Because of course, the folks who have extra resources, maybe they have equity in their home and they're a homeowner, right? Maybe they have money in the bank account, maybe some savings. Well, then they can pay 
to replace the lead pipes in their home. But people in low-income communities or people who rent often cannot. And the president and I understand that this is, yes, it is an infrastructure matter, but it is also a public health matter. It is also a public health matter. And one of the essential functions of government is to concern itself with the public health, which is why President Biden and I decided that we need to address this issue, understanding the public health crisis it can create, and then making sure that all people have access to what they need to be healthy, regardless of how much money they have in their back pocket. So we have invested billions of dollars to remove every lead pipe in our nation, including right here in Pittsburgh. And today I am proud to announce that President Biden and I are dedicating $5.8 billion in federal dollars to help remove lead pipes and to fund clean water projects across our country which includes more than $200 million for Pennsylvania. And I will tell you, yes. And, and as you heard, I was in Pittsburgh not very long ago, and when I was last here to speak with members of this community impacted by the lead pipes, um, since that has happened, or since that meeting, we have now made investments that have resulted in this city being able to replace more than 3,000 lead pipes to the benefit of more than 10,000 people. And you are well on your way to replacing every lead pipe here in the next 24 months. So today's additional investment will help accelerate that work, and it will also help upgrade other water infrastructure. So here's the deal. In Pennsylvania, many water mains that deliver water to a street or a neighborhood are over 100 years old. So old water mains are more likely to break or bust, especially when the temperatures drop. Just a few weeks ago in the Hill District, a water main burst and hundreds of people lost water for a full day. The $200 million now coming to Pennsylvania can be used to replace old water mains across the state and also could be used to upgrade storm drains and prevent floods during the heavy rains, like the floods that you saw in downtown Pittsburgh just a few weeks ago. So when President Biden and I talk about why we do what we do, it is to deliver in a way that is about real results for real people. It's about understanding the constraints and the burdens that families face, that working people face, for some basic things, like having access to clean water, and what we know we can do together to actually fix these longstanding problems. And in addition, part of the beauty of what we have all done together is these investments will create jobs, good paying union jobs, <laughs> jobs for plumbers and pipe fitters and laborers, jobs for the workers of Plumbers Local 27 here in Pittsburgh. And it comes down to this. In the United States of America, every person should be able to have clean water. I shouldn't have to say that. But it does come down to that. Every person should have a right and the ability to have access to clean water. And it should not matter where you live or how much money you earn or how much money you got in your back pocket. And with the help of all of the leaders here, we are building a future then where clean water will be a reality for all. And I thank you all for the work you do every day. May God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our environment, and it preserves vital and diverse ecosystems all, of, all across this great nation, from the biggest of cities to the smallest of rural communities. Harris, 
have made investing in our nation's water infrastructure a United States history. More than $50 billion, and that's ours, our entire economy. It sustains life, it sustains 